We're Sharon and Phil, and we've spent a month living on the tropical island of Saipan. If you've been watching our series so far, you'll have seen us explore a lot of the beautiful beaches, hikes, and beauty spots on the island, as well as learning about its importance in World War II history. With only a few short days left here, we're packing in as much as we can by visiting places we haven't seen yet, including Bird Island, the Grotto, and Mount Tapacha, the highest point on the island. But we start off by checking out a couple of the hotel resorts. So I just finished teaching at 12 and we're going to the Aqua Resort Club for lunch up to the north of the island, north of Garapan. It'll take about 20 minutes to drive here. Looks very nice. It's very nice. Nobody at the pool. We got a pool day pass at the Hyatt Regency and were keen to see how it compared with our pool day at the Hyatt Regency in Guam. Unfortunately, this hotel hasn't fully recovered from the super typhoon, so the services were limited. There's nowhere open during the day to buy food or drinks, so we ended up getting a couple of bottles of soju from the shop inside the hotel. The beach bar doesn't open till 4pm. I'd say more gar like the garden's bigger than the one in Guam, it was more like pools. Oh. Little water feature. Yeah, this is a huge garden area. Oh, very pretty. There's parrots. A parrot. Hello. Can you speak? What do you say? You say hello? Not a happy parrot. <laughs> Doesn't want to talk to us. So here's the pool. Nice. The water feature over there. Sun beds. Quite a small pool area, but it's nice. Okay. Found us a good spot. So we're just chilling at the pool at the Hyatt. So the Hyatt and well the whole island of Sapan is, is still recovering from the last uh, typhoon. So some of the facilities are still unavailable here. You've got like a, a QR code where it says you can like look at the menu, but the pool bar is actually closed. I don't know if you can hear the parrot screaming right now. Anyway, so it's kind of just like a shop in there. Um, so I went in to buy some drinks. We wanted to try soju anyway. It's a Korean um, drink. It's like a rice based alcohol. It's, um, how could I describe it? It's like similar to like a vodka liqueur, I would say, but like an unflavored vodka liqueur. Anyway, it's uh, it's good that we're like acclimatizing ourselves to Korean drinks um, because of our next destination, uh, which you'll find out soon. The beach here in front of the Hyatt is still cordoned off, but this part not cordoned off. This is technically micro beach. We've been here before already. On our third last day in Saipan, we finally got to go back to Bird Island, but this time, rather than just go to the viewpoint, we were able to hike down to the beach, then wade across to the island itself. Much calmer weather than we had last week from up the top. We're on the island. Was that fun? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. You, you didn't think. I've never waded out to an island before, I don't think.
On Bird Island, there's a natural infinity pool facing out to the open ocean. The experience of swimming in this is really unique and definitely beats any man-made infinity pool I've ever swam in. It's much better than the point that you Oh yeah. You have to, you have to come to Ireland. I mean, this was just like, it's this <laughs> massive cliff. But then it's pretty cool that we're going to be swimming on the rock. It's our second last day in Saipan. We're sad, sad to leave. But today we're finally getting to do something that we've been wanting to do the whole month. Uh, we're going to the grotto, we're going to swim. Uh, it's like a, a cave. Uh, you have to jump in, uh, it's like an underground cave that you can swim in. Connected to the sea. Yeah, it's connected to the sea by a tunnel, but you can only do that if you have a diving license, which we had hoped to do while we were here, but because of my ear infection, and problems I was having um, it, we couldn't do the, the diving license sadly uh, but yeah finally we're getting to go to the grotto because the weather has calmed down a lot it's, the currents were very strong the first couple of weeks we were here the wind was very strong but it's a lovely calm day today it's a very hot day so it'll just be nice to go and chill and have a refreshing dip in a cool underground cave It's just amazing here, watching the swell of the sea. Just as it's pushing in from under the rocks. Especially up the back there, the water is just pushing in from the sea. Pushing this body of water up and down. And then, there we go, it down one. There. You just hear it crashing up there all the time, you have to be careful of it.
So today I'm cooking pad thai with prawns, or shrimp as they call it here. To start off with, I made a marinade. So I use a tablespoon of lime juice. So for a bag of four limes here, it's about a dollar, so not too expensive. I use two tablespoons of fish sauce. This fish sauce comes in from Thailand, 750 mil for $1.09. So again, very cheap. There's loads of soy sauce available on the island, but I couldn't find gluten-free soy sauce. So this is like a special order, um, coconut aminos uh, soy sauce replacement. So I use one tablespoon of this instead of soy sauce. Mix that together in this bowl. And then I've just been marinating the prawns, the shrimp in here. I just got a bag of frozen shrimp from the Happy Market. It was like $5.50 using the frying pan to marinate because we don't have a large bowl. <laughs> so um, I got rice noodles, big bag of rice noodles. So I've just been soaking them in boiling water and one, tablespoon, one teaspoon of sesame oil. The rice noodles were $2.19 for 375 grams. So again, not too expensive. And again, gluten-free. And then I've chopped some local bok choy. Again, that was about $2 something. I just got a can of corn because I couldn't find um, fresh baby corn here. So that can was $2. And then I got a big can of water chestnuts. It's 280 grams, so it's quite a big can, but that was $2.50. So I'm gonna heat the wok. Again, I'm using this vegetable spray oil, it's $4. Switch the stove on like this. As well as the spray oil, I'm just gonna add one teaspoon of sesame oil. Now this sesame oil was uh, six over six dollars for this bottle so a little bit pricey but I've used it a few times so getting a good use out of it and now I'm gonna lift the prawns the shrimp out of the marinade I've saved the marinade because I'm gonna mix that with one tablespoon of green Thai curry paste so it was three dollars thirty for this tub of curry paste again big tub mm. It smells so nice and fresh. Start mixing that a little bit. Give this a stir. These prawns are getting nice and pink now. I am going to add sweet corn, already chopped, so that's handy. Next is the bok choy, and it's supposed to be bean sprouts. Um, I had asked Phil if he could get some while he was out this morning. I was teaching this morning, so anyway, it didn't work out, so we're just gonna forget about the bean sprouts this time. <laughs> I've just done some extra bok choy to make up for the lack of bean sprout. Okay, it's time to add the curry paste mixture. So again, this is green Thai curry paste, uh, two tablespoons of fish sauce, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and one tablespoon of lime juice. Mmm, smelling good. How to drain when you have no... Who needs a colander? Hmm? Okay, so it's time to add the water chestnuts and the cooked rice noodles. So it's so much food. The final ingredient is to pour in the coconut milk. Yeah, so just uh, mixing in the coconut milk. So that can of coconut milk was $1.40. So I think I worked out that like per serving, this meal costs about $2.15. So it's not, it's quite an, an inexpensive meal if you are living in Saipan and you're on a budget. It's our last day in Saipan and what better way to end our time here than to drive to the highest point on the island, Mount Tapachau. We'd actually attempted to come here a couple of weeks earlier, but Google Maps took us via Navy Hill. If you want to reach the top, be warned, don't go that way. The road got progressively worse, ending up as just a rutted overgrown track through a field, so we had to turn back. Yeah, that's yeah. That is where we failed. That, that is, is where, where we, we failed. The better way to go is via Capitol Hill. The road is still rough at places, especially after a recent rain, but at least it's better maintained. point on the island. It's quite nice actually. You can now <laughs> see everything we know. 
over there is like Hagman and Forbidden Island and down the south is the airport and where we are staying. The hotel resort's over there, the main town and then in the north we've got the and all the touristy attractions, all that stuff. Yeah. Mount Tapachau was a strategic location for the Japanese army when defending the island against American invasion. From here they could keep a close eye on the beaches and spotters could direct cannon fire to inflict heavy losses. Emperor Hirohito himself had said, If Saipan is lost, air raids on Tokyo will take place often, so you absolutely must hold Saipan. 8,000 US Marines hit the beaches on June 15, 1944, with orders to seize the valuable airport to the south first, then take the high ground, swinging like a gate toward the north of the island. The Americans too knew the importance of Saipan, with Lieutenant General Holland Smith saying, I have always considered Saipan the decisive battle of the Pacific, for it breached Japan's inner defence line and opened the way to the home islands. Yeah, so our one regret of this trip is we didn't make it over to Tinian. Uh, so when we were researching for the trip, we heard that it was $45 per person to make it over there on the on the plane. But actually, since the pandemic, the prices have gone up. It's $160 per person now, so it's a little bit pricey uh, just to go over the, a five minute journey across to that island. Uh, but over there, it's very historic because that is actually the island from which the Enola Gay, so the, the plane which dropped the, the two atomic bombs in Japan on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it was launched from that island and you can go there and visit the the site where where it was launched from so we'll just have to come back another time so that we can go visit Tinian but yeah so this is this is nice a nice nice fitting end to our time in Saipan to see the whole island again. to be up here at the top and not to be scared <laughs> of how remote it feels to be here because we really going to love the island and the people and yeah. it feels like a second home yeah. and it doesn't feel isolated anymore. So we're at the airport, it's 2am in the morning and the next destination is... Seoul.